Britt and Roger, y'all want to come on down? Y'all can sit right here, and uh, that'll keep you from having that long walk in a little bit. These guys uh, were part of the team that went to Maine with us this week, and uh, I asked them, I, I told them through the week, I said, be, be conscious of what's going on around you because uh, I'm going to want you all to give a report to the church about what you experienced and how you felt you saw the Lord working in those uh, areas and all. So guys, I'm going to turn it over to you all. Uh, Roger, you want to come first? <laughs> now let me, you know, oh, I, Roger, come on up here, Roger. Roger is kind of quiet. And uh, he sits in the back, but I've known him for a while, and there's nothing I could, I, 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 can, I can ask him to do anything, he'll do it. He just has that kind of a servant's heart. So when I found out that he was going to Maine, I was really excited about that, because I knew that not only would we be blessed by being with him, but he'd be blessed as well. Let me get one of these microphones. Mitch, this one right here? Okay. Let's move it a little bit closer. I'll let you adjust it, Roger. Test. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to leave uh, a, a good portion of this for the other two gentlemen. Uh, the thing that really, the thing that really uh, impressed upon me was was what had happened on Friday. Uh, all during the week, we worked hard getting this house put back together. Well, actually, we tore it up. And then we put it back together, tried to. We got most of it back together. Uh, it, was a, it was a mess. Originally, we were supposed to do some uh, cabin building, but we ended up getting this home to uh, tear into and, and try to put together for habitation. Uh, so we worked all week really hard on the, on the house, and uh, we got to Friday, and uh, Brett and... Pastor Jimmy Johnson from Paxville and I were working in the in the house, and I went outside, came back in, and there was a neighbor from a nearby apartment complex in there talking with Pastor Jimmy, and uh, so I was just standing around listening to the conversation, and uh, it moved into a personal nature, and uh, the gentleman had just lost his wife thirty days ago. Uh, to cancer, 45-year-old lady. Uh, he was still visibly shaken, uh, as you can well imagine, losing his love mate. Uh, they also had a 16-year-old daughter. So the two of them were struggling, trying to cope with this loss. So Pastor Johnson let him talk about that loss and uh, the man had, had some faith. Uh, he was a churchgoer. Um, and the man said, well, let me, let me get out of here and let you guys get back to work. And Pastor Johnson said, well, hang on a second. If you don't mind, well, we'd like to have a word of prayer with you. He said, oh, that would be just great. So we stood there, and uh, Pastor Johnson uh, gave thanks and asked the blessing to be on the man and his family and help him to get through this tough time. Uh, he was very appreciative, uh, tears in his eyes, and he, uh, he thanked us much for being there, and uh, that really moved me that we uh, waited all week for something miraculous to happen, and that, I felt, was the highlight of the whole week. Really glad I left. We were gone, and... Uh, um, I'll never forget it and appreciate the guys I went with and uh, uh, ready to go again. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Which one of you wants to give it a shot next? Brett, <laughs> come on. Hey everybody, good morning. My name's Brett Collins, and I was part of this team that went. Uh, there were five of us from here, and then the two other gentlemen that Roger was talking about, Larry Fraser, the pastor at Bethel, who actually lives around the corner from me, uh, from here, probably from here to the sound booth, maybe. 
a little further, and uh, Jim Johnson, who I went to school with, he was a year ahead of me in school. So I got to reconnect with Jim, which was really good. We talked about, you know, whatever happened to classmates, you know, and that kind of thing, and uh, really enjoyed that part, and uh, got to know Larry some, and um, just got closer to all of these guys. We stayed in a house, and I had the thought that I would, to me, you know, as a staying in a house as compared to maybe a hotel would be the the way to go because you get that you know we get around that kitchen table and then just talk about the day or talk about fishing or hunting or you know just our lives you know and that's that's really uh i think that was just as big a part of it as the the physical work that we did so um and i read this verse while i was up there and it it struck me that a lot of this happened, this is Hebrews 3.13, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. It was encouraging, this whole thing was encouraging the, the camaraderie, the Christian fellowship, um, seeing what God is doing up there. Um, kind of like what Daryl was saying earlier, when you can see it, you know, when that insulation shows up, when that electrical wire shows up, and you know that, that Roger, the missionary, just went and bought that. Uh, that that may, yeah, puts you know, a picture in your mind instead of it being an abstract thing, oh, we'll give to missions. Well, missions is, you know, sometimes it's insulation and electrical wire and, and sheetrock and things. Um, the whole idea of what he was doing was to, he, he got this house to house, you know, have a place for future mission teams to stay and maybe for even local pastors there to use as a little retreat. Um, and then the other work that we were doing was in the upstairs of his home. Um, he said they were going to house something like 152 missionaries in his home this year. The other guys who were from Spartanburg, George, Ray, Bobby, and uh, John, were staying there with those, you know, in his home. And this was just, they had another part of this uh, home in his attic is now, you know, well, I think it's pretty much complete. will be a, another bedroom that they can get, I don't know, maybe four more people up there. Yeah, four. So um, it was just, the whole, the whole trip was encouraging. Um, we talked a little bit about um, did the trip bring you closer to God? And I would say yes. Um, did it, did it, make me want to support missions more yes absolutely i can tell you that uh from what we were able to see there it's it, you know every any any support that he receives is well used and for the kingdom so um brought certainly brought me closer to these guys you know we, we've been in men, most of us have been going to the prayer breakfast group and please come because i i, I really think you'll enjoy it um so we've have we've had some time together, but there's nothing like living and eating and sleeping and cooking and you know with these with with each other for a week to to help you really get to know each other better. Um, speaking of cooking, Wayne, everybody, I think most people here know this, but we got to experience Wayne's cooking again. That was that was certainly certainly good. Um, Larry cooked one night, but um, I was going to just run through a little. I'll tell you what we did that week. You know, kind of like what our itinerary was so you get an idea of of what actually was going on so Monday was our travel day um, I was one day off all week Monday for some reason felt like a Sunday so it really it really went by pretty quickly um, on the way up there um, we flew to uh, from we flew from Columbia to Charlotte and from Charlotte on to Portland Maine and I got in I got in the middle seat between two very large fellas so it was kind of like this you know on the way back now I had I had nobody sitting on my row so that was that was nice to be able to stretch out a little bit um, when we got up there we got to eat some good Maine seafood they've got delicious food and uh, so we got to experience that uh, right there in Portland we, we did go by and see a lighthouse and it, when I took a picture and sent it back to my family I said this look this is just like a postcard you know um, very beautiful place up there. Uh, much cooler weather, as you might imagine. I checked it this morning. I think it was 55 was their high for today. Uh, I think ours is 84 or, or mid-80s somewhere. So uh, 
real nice weather to work in because, you know, you get to moving around and, and uh, it's, you know, you, you kind of want it on the cooler side a little bit. Um, that night we ate supper at Roger and Caroline's house and we got to meet those Spartanburg guys who were staying there. And then Tuesday we hit the ground running and uh, we went over and saw the house that they've purchased um, and it really needs a lot of work and it's getting a lot of work. It's going to be, it's going to be super, I have no doubt, but uh, yeah, it, it definitely needed some TLC. Um, but that's, you know, the benefit one part of that is they were able to get it pretty inexpensively so and then um Daryl and Nick and I went back to Roger and Caroline's and went up there and continued the work on this attic bedroom project with um, sanding the sheetrock and then painting um fortunately Daryl knows some of that stuff so he was able to, to guide us novices and kind of point us in the right direction um Wednesday we did the same thing well let's see Tuesday night Larry cooked us a nice meal um, Larry's also a, a really good cook and um, Wednesday we went back to Roger and Caroline's and continued that painting and um, that night we rode up the road to a place called Moody's Diner so this was I mean they had liver and onions and um, fish cakes and you know things that you might expect to see at a at a diner around here even you know hamburger steak and stuff like that real good real good home type cooking um, it was a little different, but uh, it was good. And uh, the funny thing was somebody, the other crew actually showed up at the same restaurant. This is like 20 miles away, but it was one of the only things open. That, you know, they were open until 9. I think we got there around 8. So they kind of, it seems like everything kind of slows down there pretty early in the evening. Um, but the other guys were there too at a separate table, and they told us the next day that they overheard some of the, the other people saying, why are those guys so dressed up? And I think we were dressed kind of like this, you know. We didn't think we, we didn't have suits on or anything, but uh, um, let's see. On uh, Thursday, work was kind of winding down. Well, for me, I went over to the to the other house, the new, well, the what's going to be the new house, new to them house, and uh, started hanging insulation. I've never done that before. Um, so that, that was good. And you could see the progress starting. And there was, in that house, y'all, there were a lot of people in a, in a relatively small space. The, and there weren't, you know, sometimes you, they would turn to get a tool and that tool would be gone. But um, the, the camaraderie and just the, the companionship and there was a good spirit about the whole way that we all worked together in that place. Um, so that, that was, again, and, and it was encouraging. And there was, you know, we talk, we'd stop here or there and talk a little bit um, about home or, you know, our families or whatever and, and get to know these guys. And by the end of the week, you know, we hadn't, we'd never seen these guys before. And there was uh, a good feeling of fellowship with those, those folks. We traded pictures, you know, and texted each other and got their names and things. Um, so... Friday, like Roger was saying, of course, um, Ed came over and Jim was able to pray with him. That was good to see a, a, a human connection because that's what this is really is all for. And then, of course, Saturday we got to fly home and it was good to be home. Um, but finally, I'll say that uh, what I was really encouraged by, too, was, oh, I, I did forget to mention on Thursday night, um, Roger and Carolyn had their small group. And we got to go over there and fellowship with some actual Mainers and meet meet those guys. And they're just people, just like us, you know, uh, good folks. So the big thing was Roger seems to be a planner. And um, to see, you know, this is not done haphazardly. He's got a, a vision and a strategy. And I know some of these guys have gone up there visioning. Um, so the vision for Maine, of course, all of this is to get the gospel of Jesus Christ to as many people as possible because they certainly need it. Now, before Wayne gets up here, I want to, we, we've got a short video we want you to see where you can visualize and actually see some of the places that uh, we're working. Now, when, when Britt talks about the house, uh, 
Jim uh, Johnson says, tell Roger, he said, you know, in South Carolina, we'd bulldoze that and build something else. But, but, but real estate is so expensive there. That, I mean, out of, out of sight expensive that they got this uh, shack for $40,000. Now, the, 40, 000, the, the land it sits on is probably worth more than $40,000. So if you can get volunteers to come in then and help fix it up, then you've got a really nice investment. Caroline and Roger went into the equity of their own home to put up the 40000 for that. So that's, that's how committed they are. They are committed to reaching people for Jesus Christ. So we've got some pictures of this, uh, a video slide of this uh, uh, trip. You'll see some of the pictures of these houses. Streams 
of mercy, never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise His name, I'm fixed upon it. Name of God's redeeming love. Hither to thy love has blessed me, thou hast brought me to this place, and I know. Sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, bought me with his precious blood. Oh, to grace. How great a debtor Daily I'm constrained to be Let thy goodness like a fetter Bind my wandering heart to thee Prone to wander Nick, Nick put that together for us. Now, Mr. Wayne, would you come and uh, tell us about your experiences? Good morning. It was a wonderful week. It, uh, it took me back quite a few years living in that house with those guys uh, reminded me of my early Air Force days when I lived in Open Bay Barracks, you know, because they was running around doing laundry and cooking and <clears throat> chewing the fat and just having a good time. Uh, I, I can tell you that it, <clears throat> I don't think anybody stayed up past 10 o'clock. We were all sound asleep by then. <clears throat> But the thing that, that really touched my heart the most was meeting Roger's uh, uh, home group from, from his church. Uh, there was one young man, <coughs> Curtis. He, uh, Roger told us he'd be there early. We ate supper there that night. Caroline fixed a, a nice spaghetti dinner. And uh, <coughs> we had supper there and Sure enough, Curtis come bouncing in early, and he had a picture frame that he had made to show Roger. He was proud of that thing. He was a, a very nice young man. I, I think he was a, a little uh, autistic, but you could tell that, that uh, I talked to him in, in quite some depth after at length after the little worship service was over, and he was excited. He was excited about being there. He was excited about knowing Roger, but most of all, he was excited about knowing Jesus. Uh, he, <clears throat> uh, and, and that brought me closer to my relationship with God <clears throat> than anything. Talked to another young couple there, uh, and I think Daryl talked to them too, uh, <clears throat> Eric and J uh, Jamie. They, uh, they were a young couple that uh, <clears throat> was looking for a, a, a church 
when they ran into Roger. Uh, the night that we went out to eat at, uh, at Moody's, I was at the register paying him a bill, and, and the, uh, uh, the lady asked me, she said, what are y'all doing here? <laughs> you know, and I said, well, we're on a church mission to uh, reconstruct a house for, for missions. And she said, oh, that's wonderful. Uh, I, I need to, I, maybe I need to go to church. And I thought, well, you know, <laughs> just the idea that she had the thought made my heart leap. Uh, I, I did notice one thing. <clears throat> they had a hard time smiling up there in Maine. A very difficult time smiling. They were pleasant, friendly, good people. But if you asked one of them to smile, you'd think it broke their face to do that, you know? They were just straight-laced, serious as they could be. And uh, <clears throat> I, I guess that's why we had such a good time in, in, at home that night or during those nights. We, we had a lot of laughter and fun and what have you. That isn't all that happened, you know. And and would I go back to Maine? Yeah. I'd go anywhere <clears throat> I felt the Lord call me. It's well worth it. I encourage all of you to pray about it. Pray about going on mission trips. And do it. You'll be blessed probably more <clears throat> than the people you're trying to bless. <clears throat> uh, we did have some fun, uh, we, and we all learned some things. Nick got his name changed to Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl couldn't help it. He called him Eric all week. And then uh, before we left to go up there, uh, Daryl said, you know, he had talked to Roger up there and that uh, he told him it was a muddy season. And uh, <clears throat> so he discovered what the muddy season was, as you saw on the van, on, with the van. The ground looked solid, and he was trying to do a three-point turn. The ground wasn't solid, folks. We had to get an oyster farmer to get us out. <laughs> but it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and the camaraderie that, that uh, Britt spoke about, we, <laughs> that, was, uh, that was worthwhile too. That was worth the going, just to have the camaraderie with these things. Like I said, it reminded me of a barracks full of GIs trying to get along, you know. And have a have a good experience in life. That was a great experience. I encourage each and every one of you to pray about it and do it. Thank you. I think we're very fortunate in our association to have Kevin Lynchfield as our our uh, associational missionary because. No, we wouldn't be doing this actually if it wasn't for Kevin and for the Lord because Kevin knows what an associational missionary is supposed to be doing. That's getting us involved in missions. And uh, he has done a great job. Kevin's right here, in case y'all are wondering. And he's done a great job of coordinating these things, getting us up there, helped us get the finance of the house that, that we stayed in and all. But I want to say a few words, and then I'm, I'm not going to say much, just a few words here. I could, I could, the experiences we had went on and on and on. But in Exodus chapter 17, Moses, God has told the, the Israelites to go out and fight the Amalekites. And so Moses goes out and, and the, the army of the Israelites are out there and they're fighting the Amalekites. And Moses holds up the staff. You remember the staff that he, he parted the Red Sea with? He held up the staff and every time he'd hold up the staff, the army of the Israelites would defeat the uh, Amalekites. But if his arms got weary and dropped, the Amalekites began to defeat the Israelites. And so the, Aram was up there, and this guy named Hur, H-A-R, was up there. 
And they began to notice that every time Moses' arms got weary and they began to drop, they began to lose the battle. So Hur got on one side and Aaron got on the other, and they held up Moses' arms until the Israelites defeated the Amalekites. Now, in a way, Roger Farrell and his family are, are the Moses. They're the Moses of Maine. They're the ones God has called. They have dedicated and committed their life, their family, to living up there and ministering and reaching people for Jesus Christ. They had 153 people come through their home last year. Can you imagine that, what that does to your home life and all? They housed them. They slept them. They fed them because they are committed and, and convicted and challenged to reach Maine for Jesus Christ. And so what we did, our part, we were the Aaron and we were the her holding up the, the arms. We went up there to try to do a little work to get that house in condition where the mission teams could come and stay. Roger told me, he said, you know, I got thinking about it. He said, my, 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 my sewer out there, my septic tank's about to bust. He said, got all these people keep coming in and it's just about to bust that thing. So it's, it's, we need to be those invisible partners to lift up the hands of a Roger and Caroline Farrell and help them reach Maine. Roger told us when he was here in June, that January, that only 3% of the people of Maine were identified as evangelical Christians. So Wednesday night when we were at the Bible study, the home group at Roger's house, I wanted to talk to some of these people and say, Why, what got you here? What got you to Roger's church, to Anchor Church? So I was talking to Eric. Uh, Eric, his name really was Eric, Nick. Nick reminds me of Eric Mitchum, so I keep calling him Eric. Anyway, uh, so this guy's name was Eric, and I said, Eric, what brought you to Anchor Church? What was it? He said, well, he said, I was a reform in the Reformed Church, and he said, but you know, I really didn't know a whole lot about God. I said, okay. He said, I really didn't go much either. And I, I, thought, I thought right then, had you asked Eric to fill out a survey, are you a Christian, do you believe in God, Eric would have said yes. I think he would have been part of that 3%. But Eric didn't know anything. And so Eric met Roger. He liked Roger. He liked Caroline. They decided to start attending the church. And now Eric has started reading the Bible, something he has never done in his entire life. So I'm sitting there, Roger's sitting there, and Eric's sitting there. And Eric is telling us about how excited he is to be reading the Bible for the first time in his whole life. And, uh, and man, that got me excited right then. Roger pulls out a study Bible and he says, Eric, this is what we're going to do. And I got thinking, how much more we could help Roger and Caroline if we would pour our resources into helping them. That's, that's exciting, folks. That, we're going to go back. I don't know when. We're going to go back. But you, put, you keep them in your prayers, all right? Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for what you've called us to be, and that is a missions-minded church, Lord, to reach out, Father, and to, and to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in this world. Lord, too many of us Christians and too many of us churches, Lord, are, are trying to look grand. We're trying to look uh, splendorous. Or we're trying to look just something that we really shouldn't be, Father. We should be spreading the gospel. So God, put the fire in us, Lord. Burn us up until we make up our minds individually and collectively as the body of Jesus Christ that we are going to be a missions-minded people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm going to ask the praise team to come up and lead us in a song of invitation this morning. And if you just, if you just want to pray, if you just want to pray about uh, going on a mission trip, and I don't think Maine is the only one we're going to be going on this, the, the next couple of 12 months. I'm, I'm looking at some other places as well. But if you've got that burning desire to go somewhere, to be a part of this, you know, let's talk about it. Let's pray about it. Let's stand together.